Having a plan B is sometimes more important than plan A. If you look at the parasha of Shemot, you will see what on the surface looks like an exercise in failure. After Moshe will finally be convinced by God to go down to Egypt and set the Hebrew slaves free, he takes with him his otot, moftim, his signs and wonders, only to have Pharaoh and his magicians laugh in Moshe's face. He will leave in disgrace and actually the slaves will have to find their own straw in order to produce the same amount of bricks. On the surface, Shemot looks like a complete failure. And if you look carefully, there is its one redeeming line, the last line of the entire parasha, where God says, can we do it my way now? Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. Even Moshe gets his plan B. And amazingly, what matters in life are not the plans we have, because all too often, the plans we have fall through, but rather how we can bounce back and lean on plan B, the plans we now create. The people who have inspired me the most are the people who have lost everything in their lives, sometimes seen it literally go up in flames, and yet with a sense of tenacity and perseverance, they started over. The people who saw evil and destruction and recommitted themselves to rebuild. The people who have persevered with disability and difficulty and never lost hope. The lesson they teach us, and indeed the lesson of Parashat Shemot, is that sometimes more important than plan A is having a good plan B.